Life is not so much about what you do as how you do it. And likewise, ethical marketing is not about what you sell, but how you sell it. Ethical marketing is truthful, transparent and builds trust. Your marketing is ethical when you talk about your work and attract clients without using psychological tactics, tricks, pressure, fear or deception. Sounds good. Sounds reasonable. But take a look online and it's obvious that far from everybody is doing it. Some days it feels as if nobody's doing it. I'm Simon Batchelor and in this video I'll explain why not everybody is doing ethical marketing. Most businesses and media platforms are still based on the classic marketing model of buyer manipulation. It's a hangover from the industrial era, focused on capturing attention, creating urgency, pushing for a sale, and it's still prevalent. Yes, there are signs of change, but the norm is still interruption of your attention with adverts or allowing you to pay to skip the ads. After all, there's money tied up in not changing, because change means effort and risk, and the cost of not changing is rarely measured in money, so people see change as the high cost option. Why would the world's privileged want to change? The status quo got them where they are. Any costs or consequences of maintaining the status quo are someone else's problem. People tend to follow the path of least resistance, and that is the status quo. To go against the flow, to be more ethical, requires more effort. But I believe that more people will like to make ethical marketing choices. Maybe they don't see an opportunity to do so, or they simply don't know that they want to yet. The status quo may be doing everything it can to resist change, but things still change, often without them even realising. A great example of this is TV advertising. Most households still have a TV, but the marketing dominance it once had has changed. According to a Nielsen report, in the US, YouTube reaches more 18 to 49 year olds than all TV network advertising combined. This is down to the ubiquity of personal devices or phones and how people access media and therefore marketing differently. And for some, that shift has been in a more ethical direction. Another example is influencer marketing. Now, this definitely is not the status quo. Influencers are online authorities in their areas of special interest and they often recommend and endorse products to their many followers. On social media, the recommendation model is seen as being far more trustworthy than a traditional brand ad. Besides, people often just scroll past or even block accounts that advertise too much. Whereas personal recommendations and referrals are extremely powerful. Now, whatever you think of influencers, they can be very effective whilst not always particularly ethical. They're often being paid to promote the products and places that they feature in their videos, and I did explore that murky world in another recent video, so check that out if you want to learn more about that. Because the influencers know their audience and its demands, the promotion feels very different to a traditional paid ad, and it feels much more personal. The key thing about these two examples is that they don't need the status quo. They grew and continue to grow on new platforms that are outside of this more traditional status quo systems. So whilst both of these are not great examples of ethical marketing, they are at least examples of the fact that the status quo can be changed and challenged. When your brand is just you, you don't have to tie your marketing to outdated thinking. You're free to be creative and true to yourself because you don't have to satisfy investors or shareholder interests. It's much easier to make ethical decisions when you are the sole decision maker. So when you use more ethical marketing techniques, which is being open about what you're offering, why you're offering it, and not trying to persuade or pressure people into a sale, you will attract clients who are ready to work with you and are willing to put the necessary time, effort, and investment in. This means that the product or service that you deliver post-purchase is much more likely to be effective and appreciated, because with clients like this, the work is more likely to produce the results you intended. This is you having an impact without manipulation. Forget the status quo and what everyone else is doing. Be a pioneer and market yourself ethically. Just because seemingly few others are doing it doesn't mean that you can't. In fact, it's a great reason to be more ethical in your marketing, because you'll stand out, because you'll be telling your story in a fresh and different way with honesty and authenticity. 
This is what I found when I started talking about ethical marketing. People tell me all the time that what I say and the way I say it is a breath of fresh air. So you can make a difference. You can lead the change and you can stand out from the crowd. And that's exactly what the world needs right now. People having an impact, expiring, teaching, motivating and shifting perspectives. The impact this can have on a client means they're more likely to refer others to you, leading to you having an impact with even more people. The ethical cycle continues and the effects grow and grow. What's more, the people you work with may even be inspired by you to change their own perspective, to look for ways they can have a more ethical impact on the world around them. Your ethical marketing leads by example and the ripples spread outwards into society. If this video has got you thinking about your marketing strategy, then you might be interested in my book, Reframing Marketing. It's a three-step guide to making an effective and ethical marketing plan that doesn't rely on industrial era thinking. It's full of exercises and ideas to help you do your marketing in a manageable, enjoyable and ethical way. You can find out more and order your copy at reframingmarketing.com. I'll see you in the next video.